Welcome to Jay Doyle Field here in East Brunswick for today's boys interconference matchup between the East Brunswick Bears and Brick Memorial. With me today is Gordy Deal, and the Bears will be trying to bounce back from their tough 2-1 to loss to conference foe St. Joe's the other day. Gordy, what can we expect from the Bears today? I think it's interesting, um, Bill, because you have two teams here kind of steeped in tradition. Brick Memorial comes in with a mark of 2-1-1. One, one. East Brunswick at 1-2-1. One, so something's got to give today. And I think the interesting thing is that here's East Brunswick now. The only win they have, they actually trailed at the half to Old Bridge 2-1 to one, and came back to win it 4-2. to two. And in the two losses and a tie, they've actually led at halftime and given up the lead. Uh, things to look for from Brick. They're really strong up the middle. Andrew Cottrell, sweeper in the back, and two guys up the middle, Kelly Fletcher and Frankie Maroney, very strong up the middle. They play well between the 18s, but the complaint that their coach has had so far is that they can't finish. East Brunswick's Dan Haston has made similar complaints that the guys have had trouble finishing so far. When you look at East Brunswick, watch Keith Sultana, kind of the maestro in the middle, and Ari Schneider to be finishing things today. Okay, Gordy, we'll be back in a moment with the start of today's matchup from Jay Doyle Field. Let's get a look at East Brunswick huddled up on the sideline near head coach Dan Haston. On the far side will be Brick Memorial, Brick in the away dark green jerseys, dark green shorts, dark green socks with the gold letters and numbers. East Brunswick in the home white with the dark green letters and numbers and dark green shorts. Gordy Deal alongside Phil Peterson getting set for first half action here. Brick comes in with a mark of 2-1-1. One, one. East Brunswick with a mark of 1-2-1. One, one, one. Let's set the starting lineups. First for Brick Memorial. Brick plays with a 3-5-2. In goal will be Sean Scudelaro, junior keeper. In the back with him will be Andrew Cottrell, senior sweeper, also one of the captains. The marking backs, Justin Fasello, a sophomore wearing number 23, and number three, Preston Teeter, a senior marking back. In the middle, the five guys across will be Eddie Malou, who's a freshman, number five. Mike Ferguson, a junior, who's wearing number six. Dave Romeo, a senior, wearing number seven. The two guys they really go to in the middle, Kelly Fletcher, number 18, who's a senior and a captain. And number 22, Frankie Maroney, a senior captain as well. Up front, James Malkmus is a BS senior forward. And number 13, Justin Desiderio, is a junior forward. We probably will see Dan Monty as well. Monty has been taped up before the game started. And since Brick's trainer didn't show up, they had to substitute Malkmus in for Monty in the starting lineup. For East Brunswick in goal, Ted Papadopoulos, a senior, getting his first start in a varsity game will be number five, Dan Miller, a freshman in the back for Dan Haston today. The other backs, number 40, Brian Patterson, who's a junior. Brett Hockenjoss, a senior. And Ross Chanin, also a senior in the middle. Eric Feichbaum, Keith Sultana, Kenny Seiler. And up front will be Monbaj Gillen, kind of a withdrawn forward. Ari Schneider and Andrew Baldwin. Keep an eye on Schneider, number nine. He's a guy who can really finish. Yeah, Gordy withdrawn is uh, only a couple of forwards up front. What they'll do is try to shoot people through the middle with that extra halfback slot there. Get a look here. Feichbaum on the near sideline. Whistle and they'll bring it the other way. Brick Memorial coached by Kevin Bleem. He's actually a Brick graduate himself. Doesn't really compare to Dan Haston's experience, I guess. This is Dan's 17th year at the helm at East Brunswick. Where Bleem for Brick has been around for five years. There's Feichbaum again with the feet inside, but it wasn't red. And Brick comes away with it to bring it the other way. Their coach has said that Brick is good between the 18s. But they have trouble finishing. We'll see if that's the case here. A lot of teams over the years, between, good between the 18s. It's what you do at the end that counts. Baji Gill gets the shot off, but it's well wide. One of the things you may notice about Brick is that their goalkeeper, Sean Scudelero, who's only a junior, is not the most vocal guy on the field. A lot of their direction comes from their sweeper, Andrew Cottrell, who's a dynamite player. Now playing at the sweeper position, Gordy, you've got to be vocal. 
you've got the whole play in front of you, so you've got better vision than the rest of your teammates out there. Yeah, and I guess if your goalie's not going to be vocal, your next best choice would be your sweeper. A quiet goalie is uh, not good for a team. And as it looks so far this season, both teams have relied predominantly on the defense. It's been an unusual start to the season for East Brunswick at 1-2-1-1, and one, facing a tough opponent here today in Brick. Bears, well, on, a, Bears on a mild two-game losing streak. Well, the irony is the team they beat, Old Bridge, turned around and beat the uh, defending Group 3 state champion the other day. So go figure. I guess that's why they say you play the game in the field. Nice job of winning the ball by Brick that time, and good hustle by Kelly Fletcher in the middle. But Shaney comes away with it for East Brunswick. Here's Sultana running things in the middle and with room. Tried to lead Ari Schneider, but it was taken away by Brick. Here come the Mustangs the other way. Right now, if you look out there, Brick's playing man-to-man -man on defense, where the Bears are playing more of a zone. The Bears are going to have to really work that ball into the open space in order to connect. Feet outside for Mike Ferguson, who leads up front. That's Frankie Maroney running on. Chain in there for EB. And it was whistled out of bounds by referee Steve Menefro, who's working with Tim Lombardi today. So it'll be the first corner kick for Brick. We'll get a look here at Dave Romeo. Senior with two goals on the season. He'll handle the corner kick duties. Ted Papadopoulos getting things set in net for the defense. And Papadopoulos comes up with a nice save. Well, that was dangerous in front. Those low hard corner kicks are the toughest ones to stop. Too many legs in front to cause any deflections. A win in the back by Cottrell. Ball is out of bounds, and Brick will get the throw. This is Mike Ferguson, number six. Nice win by Chain on, on the uh, right backside. Chain has done a good job as he wins it here again. He's been sharp early on. Got a chance to meet uh, Ross Shannon a couple weeks ago, I guess it was, the GMC sportsmanship meeting. Made a nice speech about sportsmanship in front of his peers. So goal kick coming out for Bob Papadopoulos and crew. East Brunswick working left to right. Say that goalkeeper's name three times fast. <laughs> Even though they have a senior-laden team, that doesn't necessarily translate into experience. It's, the Bears graduated 11 seniors last year. Uh, didn't leave many open spots last year. They had uh, six starters lost. But most of these kids have come up through the recreational and travel programs, freshman and JV ball, so. Coach Hasten is just trying to find a combination, as he said the other day, we're really not a team yet. We're a bunch of individuals trying to put things together. Yeah, still waiting for that chemistry to develop. Shannon can't catch up with one on the right side, out of bounds, brick throw. And you'll see a lot of that today with this narrow football field with the crown. It's gonna be tough to, to sustain any wide play out here. Yeah, this is a real home field advantage of sorts for East Brunswick. Playing on the football field, it's not much, I don't extend it much wider than the, than the football field. And there's a terrible slope on each side that makes it difficult for visiting teams to adjust to. And I was talking with Kevin Bleen, the head coach of Brick before the game, who said they also play on the football field, but they extend it much wider than they do here at East Brunswick. So his team will have some adjusting to do as well. Well, Gordy, I'll tell you, I don't know that it's that much of a benefit because all these years the Bears... Don't seem to adjust to it very well either most of the time. Most soccer players hate playing on it. Everybody likes their space. So Ari Schneider knocks a cross off Preston Teeter and will get East Brunswick's first corner kick. It's a quick play for Shannon. Lots of room. Kind of a curling cross. Here comes Schneider. And a good clear that time by Teeter, but one back. East Brunswick can't control, and Brick breaks out. Well, right off that corner kick, Shannon had about 10 yards open space in front of the goal. I don't know what he was delaying on there. Baldwin running up, won't be able to catch up to it. Andrew Cottrell protecting it for the goalkeeper, Sean Scudalero. And out of bounds.
bounds, and East Brunswick quickly gets it back. Brian Patterson taking the throw in. The junior up from JV to handle things today, getting his first start. A couple of rookies in the back, and the freshman Miller and the junior Patterson both making their first varsity starts. Here's Papadopoulos, unable to use his hands there since it was played back to his own, played back to him by uh, his fellow player with his feet. Dangerous play there is the pass back from Miller. Not quite as sharp as it should have been. Could have caused problems. Ari Schneider in pursuit. Preston Teeter able to knock it back to the keeper and Brick clears. Here's Gill for EB. Knocked forward by Feichbaum. Brick controls. The 22 is Frankie Maroney. He's one of the go-to guys for Brick. He's been kind of quiet in the early going. He'll handle the throw in. Question is, is that natural blonde hair on his head? <laughs> Tough to tell these days. Here's more, Patterson. A few more years, you and I will be wanting to dye it blonde. <laughs> if we have any left. Here's Sultana, orchestrating things from the middle, looking for help on the left side. Schneider outnumbered in the middle, but he snuck behind the defense, but it's cleared by Teeter. And a nice follow-up by Teeter. Shannon moving up into the offense now, capable of going forward. Waiting for a run, but Schneider delayed the run, and now Brick wins it back. He just hit it on, waiting for the run. Shannon has the ball. Everybody's standing around waiting to what's going to happen instead of creating something out there. They'll become a true team when everybody's moving and sync out there. Uh, Teeter becomes a victim of the sloping field there, loses it out of bounds. Glad the officials can see those lines out there. Referee Steve Menefro telling these guys to calm down. Has some flailing arms there. Here's Sultana laying one off for Hawk and Josh. Poked through for her ball, went offside. I don't think either team is really where they'd want to be at this point in the season. Besides the inconsistent play, I don't think the weather uh, the weather has had a lot to do with it as well. Delayed, no practices, games postponed. Well, East Brunswick certainly has had the better of play so far. We're about 10 minutes in. Hockenjoss get it, gets it poked away. But Brick has held steady so far. East Brunswick has had the majority of play in the, say, between midfield and the 18, but hasn't had any dangerous chances yet. Only one shot, and it hasn't been on goal. Nice step up by Miller that time. Nice play ball side uh, by Sultana. And the freshman Miller showing good composure in the back. Here's Brick controlling in its own defensive third now. And it's picked off. Here's Baldwin. Nice play inside for Gill. And a good change of fields. Boy, Feichbaum almost snuck behind the defense there. And he wins the ball back. Here comes Feichbaum toward the goal line. And it was out of bounds before he got the cross off. So Brick will get a, a goal kick out of it. Gordy, that's a big responsibility for a freshman playing sweeper back, knowing that you're the last line between uh, the goal and the opponent. Now it's difficult too. Not only is, is he a freshman, obviously he's he's physically not as big as maybe some of the other players are, but to come in here and have to direct things vocally to guys who are older than you is a difficult adjustment for some freshmen to make. Yeah, you always wonder how you're going to be treated after the game. Exactly. Whether going to be any. But I th with his play though, I mean he's been playing strong soccer all over the years, and I honestly think he's got a lot of respect for what he's done out there from his teammates. I'll tell you what, Keith Sultana showed a lot of confidence in him and knocking that ball back to him a couple of minutes ago. Oh, I think Keith remembers he was playing as a freshman out here, too. Here's Gill. Feet outside now. This is Baldwin looking to turn. Does. Beats two guys, but loses to the third as Cottrell sweeps it away. Cottrell will hold. And good hustle by Baldwin to get over and prevent the ball from being knocked further upfield. So it'll be a throw in for Brick on the far sideline. No score. 
We're 11 and a half minutes into the first half. East Brunswick against Brick. Here's Gill. Another feed inside. Baldwin shot blocked. There's a rip by Hockenjoss. Deflected in front. Ball still loose. Brick hasn't cleared. Ari Schneider now. They'll reset. Miller sends the ball into a lot of traffic. Winds up being a 50-50 ball. and Brick able to escape for the moment. Ari Schneider will take the throw. You get the feeling that Brick's in a prevent defense, which translates into no scoring for your team. Yeah, they're bending but not breaking right now. Here's Teeter coming away from the pack, and good hustle to get back that time. Well, the problem, with that, problem with that kind of a setup is if the Bears can sneak one in and all of a sudden your game plan goes out the window and you've got to bring people up to try to get the tiebreaker, the tie goal. We'll shove from behind that time. We'll go against Dan Monty, number 15, is in the game for Brick. So we can get some movement out of the Bears here. Free kick, a little more than 30 yards out. Shannon will handle the duties. By a nice job by Miller, the freshman to the floor, able to uh, deke a man and then make a nice floor pass out to Shannon on the side. You worry about freshman coming in and maybe floating a choppy type ball to somebody on the sideline and losing the ball out of bounds, but he did well to keep the ball on the floor. Good composure. Well, I don't think you're going to beat the keeper high. He's a pretty tall kid. We'll see how quick he can hit the ground, though, on these low balls. Scudelero only his uh, second year of playing goalie. So not a lot of experience back there. Also a basketball player, so there you go. Hope he's got those good hands. Here's Shannon with pressure. Nice through pass to Hockenjoss. Hockenjoss looking for a runner. He'll carry with the open space. Oh, that's some heady play by Hockenjoss and a good change of fields. Unable to get the ball to Baldwin, and here comes Brick. Here's a one-on-two for Brick. Hockenjoss knocks it away. Good cover of Hockenjoss. Covering for Danny Miller, who had come forward to sweep the play away earlier. Papadopoulos is back there almost begging for a little action. Working on his suntan right now. Yeah, his nice long black sleeves and potential 80-degree weather is going to feel <laughs> comfortable. Here's Sultana looking for help in the midfield, where it's been very crowded so far today. Shannon gives to Miller, who will reorganize. Nice change of fields by the freshman. Out to Patterson, up for Hockenjoss. Hockenjoss with the loping ball. It's what we've seen so far, really. Not a whole lot of building. It's kind of like East Brunswick wants to race forward and try to test the speed of the Brick defenders early on. They haven't done a lot of building in the offensive third. Well, what they're going to need to do with this tight man-to-man -man marking is Open up space by dragging defenders away from the spot you want the ball to go to and hope that they bite. And at the same time, hoping that one of your teammates runs into that open space to gather it up. Otherwise, it's going to be between the 18s, like you said at the beginning. Good tackle by Hockenjoss to break things up. Brick comes away with it. There's a freshman Miller sweeping things away. Kelly Fletcher unable to control for Brick. Here's a Shannon feed up front. A little too anxious to go forward so far. That's why Brick has done a, or has looked decent on defense. East Brunswick has made it easy for them. Here's Cottrell, the sweeper, carrying forward. Miller with good anticipation gets back to Papadopoulos, who clears. A little over 24 minutes to go here in the opening half. No score between Brick and East Brunswick. And Brick will get the throw. And, you know, we talked about it uh, early on how these teams have had trouble finishing. It's, it's not completely evident early on, but we can see that East Brunswick is not getting the dangerous chances that they maybe should have within the... 25-yard range of the goal. We've only seen one shot all game, and it was not a shot on goal, one well, taken by Monbaj Gill. Gordy, you've seen instances here where the Bears have had time and space around the box area, but instead of 
exploding in to take that crack at the net. They've been trying to make that one extra pass in there to fine tune it. You don't get extra goals for style or style points for uh, pretty goals. It's not how, it's how many, right? You know that as a coach. I think I think from an East Brunswick fan standpoint, what you'd like to see is them test Sean Scudalero, the goalkeeper, since he's fairly new on the scene as far as soccer players go this day and age, having only played really a second season at this level. Well, in the first 17 minutes, you can sense that the Bears have a pretty safe defense back there. I mean, very confident defense. Take some chances. It's the only way you're going to find out what your team can do. Here's Hawk. He gets, needs to get a ripoff here, and he does. And the shot is just wide. That's what they need to do. Get that ball in there and test the keeper. He said he's only been playing for a couple of years. Uh, you're not sure how he is controlling the ball. May give up some rebounds out there. Especially a tall kid like that. You don't know how good he's going to be on low balls. Exactly. But they have yet to test him yet. But they won't know until they fire some shots. We'll see what happens. Number 10 for Brick on the far sideline, James Malkmus, another senior. And Dave Romeo will handle the throw in for Brick. Brick has not had a lot of action in the offensive third. And what little they've had has been easily handled by East Brunswick so far. Thank throw you. in for Hockenjoss, far sideline. Sorry, Phil. A couple of new faces in the game now for the Bears. Uh, your own Shalom. Salome, I'll get that right, <laughs> and uh, Nick Pino. There's Fife bound with a feed for Schneider, unable to connect. There's Nick Pino, the sophomore for East Brunswick. Trying to find Sultan in the middle, and Brick breaks out. Good tackle by the freshman Miller to break things up. Brick trying to build something on the right side. East Brunswick flooding men back. Frankie Maroney giving chase on the far sideline. Can't catch up with it, and East Brunswick will bring it the other way. Pino trying to change fields. Works it for Hockenjoss and now to Shannon. Shannon feeding up top to Schneider now. He's got Preston Teeter one on one. Back to Shannon, now a nice run. Good ball by Shannon. And Ari not able to catch up with it. It'll be a goal kick coming back. I think yeah. one of the indications you can tell that East Brunswick is just racing forward and knocking the ball and hoping guys can outrace the defenders is that every time you get a look at Ari Schneider, he's usually in a one on two scenario. Uh, it's tough, you know, this last trip downfield, Brick's got seven people back in there. You're not going to get that running north and south, up, you know, straight up and down the field. You've got to work laterally and have the, it's more important that these people can get these passes through. But they're holding on to the ball just a little too long. by Brick. East Brunswick could get the throw. Jared Halper, number 13, senior in the game now for EB. Sultana with a nice feed to a running Hockenjoss. East Brunswick with a chance here. Shot and a save. Yaron Shlomi gets the shot off for East Brunswick. Just a sophomore. First save the game for Brick and first shot on goal for East Brunswick. It was Miller, the freshman, being called on again. Brick will get the throw. And we see those tricky yellow lines coming into play here as the referee ruled the Brick player was on the field when he made the throw in. So ball back to East Brunswick. This is Ross Shannon.
Gill trying to settle things down. Gets knocked down by Maroney. And Gill wins it back. And too again, deep on the cross on the feed down there. Yeah, again, the ball played too far forward, and it just turned into a, a sprint for Nick Pino. Hey, you know, work the ball side to side and try to create those openings and thread it through. Yeah, I need a little more, a uh, little better link between the midfield and the strikers at this point. That's yeah, good individual effort. Tough collision in the back, and we've got an injured brick player. Try to get his number. It's good hard tackle that time. I think that might be Cottrell. See the referee, Timmy Lombardi, come in your picture there to have a look. And it is Cottrell, their senior sweeper and captain. A little slow getting up. Good clean tackle by Nick Pino. That would be a tough loss for Brick. Now he let out a yell when he went down. Whether or not he was trying to draw a foul, we'll see. Some of these guys watch a little too much TV. <laughs> I don't know where they have the time to these days. I think that they can draw a card by doing what the professionals do. But Cottrell seems to be in a good deal of pain here. About 17 minutes left in the opening half. Still no score between Brick and East Brunswick. Good matchup here. East Brunswick trying to stop a two-game losing streak, and it's been interesting watching them so far this year if you've been keeping tabs. The one win they have over Oldbridge, they actually trailed at the half as we see Cottrell come to his feet and came back to win the game by scoring three in the second half. Yet the games that they've lost and tied They've actually been leading at halftime and have given up the lead in the second half. So what you're saying is their only consistency is being inconsistent. <laughs> exactly. Or a bizarre statement, I guess, would be so far is that they're better off when they're trailing at the half. Which is a theory most coaches would not subscribe to. It's like the old wounded animal. So if we're lucky, Brick will score this half and uh, we'll see a victory in the second half here. So Cottrell comes off the field, and they bring Dan Monty, who was up front earlier, all the way in the back to anchor the defense. And we see Hawk and Joss, one being a good sportsman, two committing the foul. And in the game for Brick, will be a new man up front as we see East Brunswick break away here. Let's deploy, foul him hard, and then help him up. This way they'll know where you are next time. Hawk and Joss from Miller. Long feet up front. Brick able to clear. Well, Brick's playing his sweeper deep in there. It's going to be tough to beat him over the top. Gill with a flick on inside for Schneider. Did well to control. Here's Shannon on the overlap. Tough first touch for him. Gave it up. Tough working on that slope on the sidelines, that's for sure. Here's Brick now with a chance. They're unable to control. Back for Sultana. Bit of a miss hit. And a giveaway on the far sideline. Racing forward, James Malkmus with lots of space. But not a lot of help. Does well with the one-on-one. -on -one. Here's service in front, and a goal. Eddie Malou scores for Brick on their first shot of the game. You can almost see that developing down there as Eddie Malou was coming down the left side. People were ball watching, and he slipped right through there and had an uncontested ball to touch into the net. Well, now the Bears have Brick Memorial right where they want him. We just mentioned it before. East Brunswick's win has come trailing from behind at halftime. We'll see what happens here. So Eddie Malou, the freshman from Brick with his second goal of the season. And the Mustangs off to a 1-0 lead. 
That was just textbook soccer, really. Got the ball wide. Malcolmus beat his man, made the cross, and the finish. The most dangerous opponent is not the one who has the ball, but the people that don't have the ball out there. And that is exactly what happened on that goal. Malkmus again causing some problems on the far sideline for East Brunswick. First two minutes after a goal is scored. Most dangerous time for both teams. Uh, looks like Brick has stepped up their offense after that goal, and the Bears are becoming a little more tentative out there. Cross from Frankie Maroney blocked out of bounds, and Brick will get its second corner kick of the afternoon. Here's the corner from the far side. It's long, headed back inside by Malou and then cleared away by EB. Monty knocks it back in for Brick. Series of 50-50 balls played here. And a hold called on Brick and East Brunswick will get the free kick. Brick comes out of the short conference. They play in the Class B division, Class B South. Face teams like Allentown, Manasquan, Lacey. Their only loss has been a 1 0 defeat to Neptune. They've got a tie against Lacey and a win against Allentown and Manasquan. Here's Sultana with a foul from behind. Bring will bring it the other way. Brick Coach is calling for a card since Sultana committed the foul from behind. Well, the Bears have to try to maintain their composure. I mean, they were playing very well. First 20 minutes, all it takes is one little let up, but they look like they're pressing a little bit more. When you're trying to force the play, things are not going to run your way. Here comes Gill with room. Nice diagonal run by Schneider. Here's Gill. They need to get shot off here. Good job by Gill and a save that time by Scudelero. Played by Brian Patterson there in a header. Here comes the service. Schneider is there. Skips off his head and a nice read by Eric Feichbaum to be able to control that ball. In a battle in the corner now. And it'll be a goal kick coming out. Tough break for East Brunswick. Substitution now for the Bears. We're gonna get a look at new player in the back. They've crossed us up with some numbers here, Phil. Number 22 is in for East Brunswick. Uh, never fails. You have 24 people on this <laughs> list, and the one you don't have is the one that goes in the match. Russ Shannon takes a break. Whistle on a foul on Ari Schneider, and Brick will have a free kick coming the other way. Bound with a chance on the other side. They say last touch by Ari Schneider, and Brick will get the throw in. And here's a giveaway by the sweeper. Let's see what EB does with it. Sultana. Feet ahead for Fikebaum, won't catch up to it, and Teeter clears. Schneider working with his back to the goal. Both players slip. Here's Sultana tries to get a rip off. It's deflected. Should be out a of bounds kick. and a corner kick. And it'll be the second corner for the Bears. Service curls outward and nobody there. Mike Baum is going to track it down and East Brunswick will reload. Play inside for Sultana, looking for help. Dribble penetration will work when you're down numbers, and he gets a nice left-footed shot off just wide of the goal, and it'll be a corner kick coming out. So East Brunswick now starting to apply a little more pressure. Flick 
walk-on header that time by Kelly Fletcher. Dan Miller comes over to clear. Schneider for Hock and Joss. Back to Schneider with room. Needs to take advantage of the space. And again, we see a serve too early. Ethan Brunswick down numbers in the middle. With Schneider's ability, he needs to take the ball and beat his man and get a shot on goal. Well, you watch him out there, Gord. He's got great vision. Always with his head up, looking around. Uh, he's got to get some teammates moving and moving on a timely basis and constructively. Goal kick by Brick, won by East Brunswick. Here's a chance for Pino. Nice individual play and a save by Scudelero. Hustled that time by Pino to try and create something. And Scudelero gets rid of it. Derek Morales is number 22, who came to the game to replace Shannon before, wearing number 22 in the back. A couple of more substitutions, too, for the Bears. If you look at Massimo D'Angelo, number 21, and also number 7, Kenny Seiler. Out of the game will be Nick Pino. And Yaron Shlomi. A little less than 10 minutes to go. Opening half. Brick leads at 1 0. Strength of a goal by Eddie Malou, the freshman. The only shot on goal that Brick has had so far. East Brunswick has got four, but only two shots have actually been on goal. Right now, Scudelero has not really been tested on the low shots. He made one save that was actually about a foot over the crossbar. Dangerous play by Brick. It'll be an indirect free kick for the Bears. Uh, good challenge of the keeper. Scudelero had to come out and knock that one away. Sultana can't hook up on the far sideline. It'll be a brick throw-in. Good job by Scudelera using his height to punch that one away that time and avoid any further danger. Miller gets pushed off the ball, and Brick has a chance here. This is Malkmus who hurt them before, and now Kelly Fletcher. Fletcher with a fleet for Malchus. This is the way it developed last time, but this time Miller is going to be able to ride it out of bounds. Good heads-up play by the freshman that time after he made a giveaway in the middle of the field. Good thing you had Dave Romeo breaking down the left side unmarked for Brick. A couple of more substitutions. Ross Shannon re-enters the game. Monbaj Gill will take a breather. Also in the game will be Peter Forte, who gives a break to Keith Sultana. So a lot of substitutions, getting playing time. A lot of guys on the bench. In fact, first three games of the season, Dan Haston used 18 guys in each of the first three games. Backed off a little bit against St. Joe's. But you can see he's made a, another host of substitutions again today. Hey, still trying to find that right combination. I mean, as cool as it was early this morning, it's uh, supposed to heat up pretty well near 80 degrees, so that could take its toll. Here's Hock and Joss. Oh, nice chip ball up front. And again, Scudelero forced to come out. Defense did a good job keeping the Bears forwards up, preventing them from going off sides, which made it a little easier for Scudelero to come off his line. There's another chance for Brick in a foot race. Wow, look at the freshman Miller, he's able to break out of the pack, getting his jersey tugged from about six different directions, and they call the foul on Miller. At that point, with both of them going at it, no call is the best call. He had his jersey tugged clear out of his shorts, but Brick gets the call. Frankie Maroney serves forward. Patterson wins the header. Preston Teeter with a feed in the back for Monty in pursuit for East Brunswick, Massimo D'Angelo. Patterson now shifted over to right back. Here you go again, you got another left uh, midfielder, number 10 for the Brick. Malkmus left on Mark, coming down the side again. 
Kelly Fletcher is going to get whistled for a push off that time. And EB will have the free kick coming the other way. About five minutes to go here in the opening half. Clock was stopped for a while while Andrew Cottrell was tended to after a collision midway through the first half. Cottrell has since uh, left the game and has not re-entered for Brick. From up here, it looked like he might have taken a really hard knock on the shin. I won't speculate any further than that. East Brunswick trails this one, one nothing. First half, goal by Eddie Malou, the difference so far. And East Brunswick, I think it would be fair to say, has had the better play. Well, considering that's the only shot on goal Brick Memorial's had, really. Corner kicks are even at two apiece. Monbaj Gill returns for East Brunswick, replacing Ross Shannon. Throw in Bears, far side. Good win on the head ball that time by Brick. Here's Gill with time, and again, lots of time, lots of space in front of him. And they try to force the ball into Ari Schneider. Miller controls. Here's a feed for Hockenjoss with space. He's got to take it, and again, the serve. Boy, he had D'Angelo there pointing where he wanted the ball, and it wasn't delivered. D'Angelo had the inside step on his man as well. I think you're still not going to see... Things happen for East Brunswick offensively until the players are taking more space since Brick is hanging so far back. As we said earlier, between the bad weather, you know, uh, it's been tough to get some practices. They've missed a few games, canceled. And even in the offseason, a lot of these kids, there's some very talented kids out here, but very few of them played together as a team outside of the school ball. So it's tough to whip something together in just a short few weeks span. Frankie Maroney with the throw in for Brick. Tackle from behind by Derek Morales, no call. Again, a long feed. D'Angelo not able to catch up with it. Trying to force it right now. And on the pass from Scott Davis. Patterson able to shield his man off on the far sideline there and earn the throw in for EB. About two and a half to go, first half. Again, the official time kept on the field. Justin Fusello on the far sideline for Brick. And a yellow card has been issued. He'll have to come out of the game as well. Be D'Angelo. Massimo D'Angelo, the senior. And he will be replaced by Chris Parker, another senior. Next stop, it's a play. D'Angelo would be eligible to come in, but it's mandatory in the high school rules that they come out after being booked. He's Brunswick with some time now. First touch on the ball for Parker. Brick with eight people back, though, surrounding him. See if we can get some movement out of the Bears. Schneider tried to get away with a free kick there and tried to sell the official, but he wasn't buying. So they settle for the throw-in. Here's Miller in the back with Patterson. Two guys starting their first games, playing a little catch in the back. Now in a little bit of trouble. More like Russian roulette that time than catch. <laughs> Here's Patterson again on the far side with space. Hockenjoss checks to him and receives the ball. Hockenjoss with space. But again, chooses to dump it forward and Brick will clear. Now that time the Bears had some nice movement up there, but he delivered the ball straight down the field. Yeah. 
And that is the end of the first half with the score. Brick one, East Brunswick nothing. Take a look quickly at some of our first half stats. Shots on goal, East Brunswick two, Brick one. Shots overall, East Brunswick four to Brick's one. Corner kicks even at two apiece. And Brick goalkeeper Sean Scudelero has made two saves, no saves for Ted Papadopoulos. Brick scored on the only shot it took about the 24 minute mark. Eddie Malou, the freshman from James Malkmus, and that's where we stand at halftime. one nothing, Brick. Stay tuned for more second half action. All right, getting set for second half action. Brick leads East Brunswick one to nothing for the second half play-by-play. -play. Is my partner Phil Peterson. Thanks, Gordy. It's like Coach Haston had a strong talk with the kids at halftime. They've yet to get on the board, and uh, goals have been a premium lately for them. All right, one of the things you and I talked about in the first half that we'd like to see them do is to have a little more of a link between the midfield and the strikers because they keep punching these long balls and hoping for a foot race and it's not working out because their sweepers playing so deep. Oh, well, it's as we said, you can't play north-south against a team like Brick. You have to play laterally, work angles. You've got a much better chance of hitting your teammate with a pass if he's running across the field than just straight down the field. Nice defensive play by Fusello. Schneider chipped in by Seiler. Nobody there to pick up the rebound though. Hawk and Josh miss, missed the tackle there. We've got a breakdown field by Brick. Uh, good hustle by Shannon to get back and stop that. Yeah, Bears midfield is a little lazy getting back there that time. Brick still with the ball. Deep in the left corner. Cross down the middle. Papadopoulos headed out for a corner kick. Nice play by Kenny Siler, the senior. Generally a forward, now playing back for the Bears. Dave Romeo lining up the corner. Long ball over Snyder's head. Eddie Malou with the left footed cross. Chipped out, one on one if he could beat him. Got time and space as Brick's caught up field right now, but can't capitalize on that. Siler. Surveying the situation. Chip down the middle to space. Just out of fight bombs reach. Now with it is Andy Cottrell. Good to see Cottrell back in the game. Knocked out by an injury in the first half. Seems to be okay. He'll probably have a bruise tomorrow. Put a little ice on it today. But when he got up, he wasn't limping. So that was a good sign. Yeah. As competitive as these kids get. And uh, with the male testosterone kicking in. There is a lot of good sportsmanship with these kids. Romeo up the right side to Malkmus. This is how Malkmus hurt them in the first half. I would disagree with that call right there. Patterson tackled the ball beautifully there. Uh, in high school, you're going to get that call because it was from behind, and you can make the argument that he got the ball. But it was from behind, and that's what a lot of referees will call in high school. I'll reserve comment about high school officiating. <laughs> they generally do a very good job, though. It is difficult setup when you have two people working the, the field. Cottrell, long ball across over the crossbar. And the Bears will get the goal kick. One thing I always told my players, the referee will never determine the outcome of a game. So keep your mouth shut and don't talk to him. He calls a penalty kick against you with a second to go in the team score. Well, then you sure scored two in the first half. Well, they always say the best officials are the ones you don't even notice out there. Absolutely. Siler down an overlap and Schneider. One on one with them is Dan Monty. Look, no different a takedown than the one Patterson just had. Yeah, I thought Siler he looking for movement. I thought he might have grabbed a handful of jersey to pull down Schneider, too. Well, the referees generally tell the teams, tuck in your shirts. That's the best way to determine whether you're getting it yanked out. 
Miller. Patterson. Hawkinjaw is trying to break through the middle. Andy Ball went in pursuit over there. And they've got to force that play inside. They can't let the guy get away on the outside like that. The play's got to be turned inside so they can double up and win the ball back. But Hawk and Joss with that attempted cross. Hawk and Joss doing a great job getting to the ball. He sees a little more patience out there. Brick starting to back into their own end. Miller has time, plays it out to Patterson, cross field over to Channon. Good stick by Frankie Moroni. Moroni with time down the middle. Patterson on the left, nice feed over to Hawkins, uh, not Hawkins, Joss, that would be Key Sultana. Good move by Hawkins, Josh with a great header. Ball went just out of the reach of Chris Parker as Scuttle Arrow came out and picked it off. Ross Channon being admonished by Coach Haston for being a little too mouthy out there. He can't risk another card. He's already got one this first half. Number seven, senior Dave Romeo plays it in. Hawk and Josh looking to switch fields. Well, Hawk and Josh has been a nice backbone in the back, and he's so dangerous because of his ability to come forward. Snyder on the left. Bears just don't have the numbers up there. That's what they need from Schneider. He's a playmaker. He's got his vision looking all over the field. I think Ari's got to use his ability to get by people on the flank and start getting that ball across. We haven't seen that from him yet today because the midfield has not made the links with the strikers that they've needed to make. Miller with a long ball right fail to connect. Moroni. And it's having a tough time out there. It's a good call. Just got to learn to keep his mouth quiet. Good playmaker out there, but just has to control his emotions. Doesn't want it to let to get a better of his play. Sultana through the middle. Spins around. Got Snyder breaking. Couldn't get it up in the air to him. Nice tackle by Snyder. Here comes the shot we need. Pulled the wrong club out of the bag on that one. The first shot of the second half for East Brunswick and the fifth one overall in the game. And only two of those shots have been on goal. So we haven't seen a real test yet of Shane Scudelaro, the junior keeper for Brick. Well, Ari Snyder's starting to get the better of his mark out there. And a tight marking team like Brick, you got to pick whatever spot you can, whether it be dribble around one person and thread that pass, but you can't hold on to the ball too long or all you're doing is giving the other team a chance to get back on defense. Sultana, nice talk by Hawk and Josh. Got time and space. Pursued from behind by Malkmus. Ooh, shot just wide by Chris Parker. He's getting loose up there. It's a couple of chances Chris has had so far. And a great setup that time by Keith Sultana. Made a nice run and a good feed to Parker, as you mentioned. He made a good diagonal run and played well with his back to the goal there. Well, as we said earlier, when Brick got their goal, Bears have them right where they want them, and you can see it's starting to tilt the other way right now. Now we mentioned that in the first half that East Brunswick's only win has been a come from behind effort, and that the times that they have led at halftime, they've tied w w once and lost twice. Monty stripped away by Schneider. Good effort by Schneider. Tried to beat two men and was able to draw the foul as well. Quick restart by Siler. Hawkinjoss through the middle. Nice play. Drag back. Plays it out wide. Sultana. Snyder trying to wiggle free up front along with Parker.
Brick doing a great job so far, marking off the ball. Sultana looking to hit it far. Plays it up to Seiler. Beautiful cross, great save by Scudolero. Beautiful diving stop. He had to use every inch of his height on that one. Uh, that's some nifty ball work there we saw by Seiler with a great drag back move to free himself up for the left-footed cross, forcing Scudolero to come out and make a terrific save to prevent a goal. That's what we did not see a lot of in the first half, getting the ball wide, getting to the goal line, and serving the ball. That was how Brick scored in the first half, and that's how East Brunswick has been dangerous so far. Well, the little things that kids learn over the years, these little turns and moves. I mean, he executed a perfect Cruyff turn to beat his defender. And, but the smart thing he did was he made the play as soon as he beat his defender. Too many kids, they'll beat their opponent, but then they'll hold on to the ball too long, give him another chance to get back. Here's a two-on-one. Patterson could have made, but elected to serve it instead. Hawk and Josh again in the middle. Left-footed shot. Oh, just over the bar. Scudolero put to the test again, but makes a terrific save. That ball had some great topspin on it. It was diving down to the net. Right now, he's keeping him in the game, Gordy. Swatting those wee browns away from the basket. Chanted to take the corner kick up there, looking for some movement out of his offense. Low hard one. 17, Chris Parker. Couldn't get through all those legs. Chanted beat to the ball by Eddie Malou that time. Maroney seems like a little kid, but he's everywhere out there. Nice little playmaker. I think the Bears can smell blood at this point. Then everything but sneak one by Scudolero. Sultana over to Ari Snyder. Ari made the smart move. He ran out of space and time, so he bounced it off the opponent. And he'll get a th quick throw in. A little too anxious to get that ball across. Channel with plenty of time. Nice chip back in there. Lack of talking. There we go. Oh, right into Scudolero's hands. Great opportunity that time by East Brunswick. Good heads up play by Sultana to get that shot off too. That rebound in front though, Scudolero was lucky that time. He was on, on, on his side when he made that save. I think that was Nick Pino who slid it right into Scudolero's arms. Yeah, unfortunate break for Pino. Pino last year was one of the dynamic duo of Pino and Forte. They combined for 61 goals on a freshman team. Pretty impressive. About 12 and a half minutes into the second half of a one to nothing game. Brick Memorial out on top. Eddie Malou scoring about 24 minutes into the first half on a beautiful feed from Jim Malkmus. Whatever Coach Hasten said at halftime has sure done the job so far. Yeah, I think his team has certainly stepped up the intensity here in the second half. We saw only four shots in the first half. We've seen five now in the second half. We're only 12 minutes in. I think that's a good sign. And I think if Brick, if you're Brick, one of the things you're concerned about is the fact that we're not calling the names of Kelly Fletcher and Frankie Maroney a lot. They're the go-to guys in the middle of the field for Brick. And when we're not calling their names, that means they're not getting a lot of play. And I think that's an indication of what we've seen here in the second half, where the majority of play, even more so than the first half, well, most has of been in Brick's half of the field. Well, most of Maroney's play right now has been on the defensive mode. The only danger you face is the Bears had some strong offense in the first half. Brick slid down and slipped one, the only shot they had in the net. Channel with a little chip. Snyder chests it down. And cleared out by number 14, senior Andy Cottrell. Miller with nobody within about 25 yards of him. Looking for movement. Chips it up over the top. Again, they need to get away from having a guy like Miller serve a 50-50 ball into the middle of the park where Brick has the extra players. They need that flank play to expose Brick. That's what we've seen from Ari Schneider, what we've seen from Seiler, too. And we've already documented how tough it is to have flank play in a field like this. No question. Brian Patterson for the toss. 
Big open space in the middle, filled by Hawk and Josh, overlap and Nick Pino. Little shove in the back to uh, his opponent, Preston Teeter. Oh, Teeter is not tottered at this point. Nice save by Mike Ferguson. Par Seiler, looking for movement. Hawk and Joss again. He's picked up his play in the second half here. Great movement out of him. Yeah, I think he settled down quite a bit. mentioned before what a backbone he is to the defense and how dangerous he can be coming forward. He's got a good shot. He's got good speed and the ability to get back. Sultana. That's what we nice talked about. Nice left foot. Who's on the far post there? Poor clear by Brick. Offside call against the Bears. Another Brick player slow to get up. Hawk and Joss goes and has a word with him, make sure he's okay. I was a bet man. I'd bet Hawk and Josh to get the the breaking goal here for the Bears. He's getting his time and space. He's just got to burst through and take a crack at the net. Something low and something hard. We've already seen Scudalero is not going to be beat on anything up high. Changes for Brick Memorial as number 10, uh, Jim Alquist back into the match. They're getting a blow. Siler. Nobody running laterally there as he had to hold the ball so his teammates wouldn't be offside. Quick shot, great save again. Off the foot of Key Sultana. Took it to the right and cut a quick shot back to the left side, but Scudelero stretched out. Now they're starting to put a lot of pressure on Scudelero. Good heads up feed that time inside. Good job by Siler to hang on to the ball and then feed it. Well, they got to get one because right now it's starting to become a psychological thing. They don't know. <laughs> it's almost as if Scott Alaro is 8 feet by 24 feet at this point. Brian Patterson. Parker down the left side. Loses it. They got one on five in there is number 10, Jim Alchemus. I think Britt's content to sit in this lead from what I see so far. And he's Brunswick really starting to squeeze the field too. You can see how far up some of the players are moving or as you get your last defender up near midfield, you're squeezing about 20 guys into one half of the field. Well, you got a couple of people for Brick back there during this last restart. Putting their hands on their hips. So Bears have got to take advantage of that. Nice turn, shot over the bar. Well, that's a terrific turn by Siler that time. Good heads up play, knowing where his man was and getting the spin on him. Look for Coach Aston to shorten the bench this half as he seems to have a good working combination right now. Again, the numbers are telling the story. Phil, we talked about it in the first half. Only four shots overall, two of them on goal in the first half. Here in the second half, three shots on goal and seven shots overall. And they forced Sean Scudelaro from Brick to make some big saves. Those three shots were all labeled. Parker. Nice cross. Oh, headed just over the bar. There's Nick Pino again. We haven't called his name much today, but, but the little guy's really starting to find his space in there. He wasn't picked up, had a great opportunity. That was a great job by Chris Parker, who turned on a dime after picking up the loose ball and made a nice chip across. A little too tall for Pino that time. We would have had it. Snyder chest it down. He's got space. He needs to take it. Right through. Oh, great defensive play there. And we'll have a corner kick out of this one. Great defensive play by the Brick defender, but he did a lousy job clearing it out. Snyder for the corner. Sultana wound and fired. Miller again. Looked like an offside call, but it's not going to happen. Big challenge by Scudelero to keep it out of the net. Uh, good clear by Facello. I think they missed an offside call that time. I think you're right. Brick Absolutely. got away with one there. Uh, I think the Bears got away with one too. Yep. I'll tell you. Miller.
Miller plays it out wide to Channon. Smart play, see if people get the defense coming the wrong way and cross it back against the grain. Plays it down the right side where there's no space. Brick playing this tight defense. It's the same way the uh, Brick scored their goal. Brought all the defense towards one side and crossed it back against the grain. Yeah, the point's worth making again, too. Again, Brick only with one shot on goal. And it went in. One shot in the first half. They have one shot overall here in the second half. A total of two shots on the game and one of them on goal. I mean, East Brunswick has really turned it up a notch here in the second half. This is the kind of game where if they get one, they may get four. Oh, it's like a goalie in hockey. The ones that don't get the work, usually one gets by somehow, and the one that gets all the work is usually the, gets the hot hand after a while after a few key saves. Miller wow. trying to bust through, overlapping down the side. Nice touch through. Number 45, and he scores. <laughs> Brett Hawkins, Josh, from Danny Miller. A beautiful feed from Miller. Dragged it down the left side and slid it through an open Hawk and Josh who tucked a low shot into the net. Well, you said it. You said it would be Hawk and Josh who would have the differentiating goal here, and that's been the case so far. And how about the freshman Miller beating two guys on the dribble and finding two wide-open teammates on his right flank for the easy finish by Hawk and Josh. What a play by Miller coming all the way back, all the way up from the sweeper spot. Again, a freshman making his first varsity start delivering that kind of play is impressive stuff. Tied at one. Brett Hockenjoss, the captain. First goal of the season. Coach Jason out talking to the official. Not quite sure what it's about. A timely goal here, halfway through the second half, and East Brunswick has knotted things up. Let's watch these next two or three minutes here. are going to be very, very important for Brick. That was an experienced play out of the young freshman. Great play. He saw the space. He ate it up. Miller forced the defenders to commit themselves. And as they did, that's the moment you make that pass through. That was a great play. Uh, we've seen Siler be a thorough spark here in the second half as well. Shall I predict the next three goals here? <laughs> uh, better not push the luck. Hawk and Josh, a little too deep. Oh, nice flick on, beautiful score by number 17, Chris Parker. Well, that's what we talked about the first two or three minutes after a goal was scored. East Brunswick came right back. I said if they get one, they might get four just two. because of that bend but not break philosophy that Brick has been surviving with today. Two goals in under a minute, Gordy. Oh, this is what the Bears need. Get their scoring shoes, find the right combinations. Brick starting to get a little frustrated out there. Number 18, Kelly Fletcher. Called for a tackle from behind. He got the ball, but as you said earlier, the referees, they don't want to take a chance on anybody getting hurt, so they're going to play it tight. And he got up and threw a fit at the referee. I'm surprised he didn't get a card. Sultana surveying the situation. It's an outside the foot shot. It's Scudalero gobbles up. We're about 22 minutes into the second half. Bears, what seemingly is one of their trademark come from behind games right now, up two to one. Two goals in under a minute here in the second half. Shannon. Snyder with plenty of time. He's dangerous. Good movement to Ipino. Nice crisscross by Pino and Parker to lose the defense. Mountain was trying to create something for Brick, unsuccessful. Yeah. And we got Ari Snyder and Scott Davis back in the game. Parker coming up a little bit lame there on the far sideline. He's going to be substituted for. This first action for Scott Davis today. 
fresh legs in there and a warm day outside. Hawk and Josh getting a well-deserved rest. And D'Angelo checking back in for the Bears as well. We'll see how this series of substitutions affects what's been going on offensively for East Brunswick. Out of a wild cross by Siler. Well, Siler started everything in getting East Brunswick playing the way they needed to play to generate the right offense. He started getting the ball wide and making the runs and getting the crosses. And that started to open things up, and that's when we saw Danny Miller race up from the sweeper spot and be able to deliver the ball to Hockenjoss for the goal to tie this thing. Well, as the Bears continue to penetrate, it's forcing the brick defenders further and further back, almost to the point of distracting their scuttle arrow more than helping them. And it's opening up more space in the thir offensive third of the field for the Bears. Nice play by Davis. Beautiful pass now over to Shannon on the right side. One move too many for Shannon. Loses the ball and gets called for an hold trip at the same time. Yeah, I think Coach Haston would prefer to not see defenders like Shannon and Davis hanging on to the ball so long and taking on guys in that part of the field. Get the ball in the middle and let the horses do the work. Want to make a mistake, you want to make it in the offensive third. Pino, nice flick on. Ari Snyder coming down the left side. On on his pursuit is Facello. Snyder shielding the ball. He's in no hurry. Sit with a two to one lead and the ball. Quick cross as he's double teamed. Nice man marking. Brick not able to come loose out of their end. We got a injury down the field. Not quite sure how it occurred. Uh, Brick has taken some real lumps in this game. Try to get that number over there. All in all, as tight as this contest has been, Gordy, it's been a fairly clean game. I mean, a lot of incidental fouls, no gamesmanship. It's been a hard-fought contest. Yeah, we've seen guys uh, giving other guys a pat on the back if they've knocked them down, and sportsmanship has been good. It's a normal lump you take in a soccer match. Kind of a squib kick. I think uh, Hawk and Josh want a little more mustard on that ball, but it turned out all right for him. Nice touch by Chan and nobody there. Uh, Brick hanging on to the ball too long in the back and it's cost them good pressure offensively by East Brunswick. They win it back and they get a shot out of it. D'Angelo, a weak touch in the scuttle arrow. Last ball he put about 65 yards. Hawk and Josh, quick touch out. Too anxious to clear it out that time. Brick comes down four on four. Sultana. Out wide to Fike Baum. Overlapping. D'Angelo switches fields over to Sultana. A little too much for Siler. Must have been a blonde thing there. Or bleach blonde thing. Good hustle that time by Sultana coming over to try to make a play on that. Bears tighten it up on defense here. More of a swarm than a man to man. Siler creating havoc down that left side. Won't let him free. Nice step up by Feigbaum. He's in. Good play by Scuttle Hour to come off his line. Pike Bomb, another one of those youngsters that 
Again, the last couple of years, Coach Aston has been flooded with seniors on the team. Right now, he's only got, a, he's got three juniors on the team. He's going to have a very young team next year. Pike bomb through. And misfire by D'Angelo. There's our number 22 again, Derek Morales. Checking in for Ross Channon. I tell you what, East Brunswick may, if they go on to win this game, they may point to this as a turning point in the season. They seem to have developed some chemistry today. They're playing the way they want to play, getting the ball wide, getting some crosses. We've seen a lot of guys on the flank get involved. That would have been very easily, very easy for them to come out flat after losing a discouraging game against their arch rivals from St. Joe's on Thursday. Game where they had, as you mentioned earlier, they had the lead and let it slip away from them. I uh, talked to the uh, brick coach the night before this game, and he told me he went up to scout East Brunswick at that St. Joe's game and said that East Brunswick shouldn't have let up those two goals. They were a little slow getting back on defense, and it cost them. Uh, that's what we saw happen in the first brick goal today. I think they smell the blood now, though. They're pushing forward, controlling the midfield. But a handball call in East Brunswick. They'll have to retreat a bit. But Brick has not had a lot of play in this half of the field. Got Mike Ferguson running loose up there. Nobody marking him in the midfield. It's got to be a handball now. Against Malkmus. Got to be careful over there, Brick. Try the referee's patience a little too much. Papadopoulos will get one of his rare touches on the ball. Another injury to a brick player. And a Gatorade and the water bottles come flying as the Bears are taking advantage of the situation as Jim Malkmus is carted off the field. Well, we talked about this eerie series of developments that have been the norm for East Brunswick so far this year, where they've trailed at the halftime, they've come back to win. And when they've led at halftime, they've given up the lead and either lost or tied. This game today, they trailed at the half, and right now they've scored two goals to take the lead in the second half. About uh, 10 minutes to go. I know it's cliche, but the next goal is critical if there is one. But I'll say it anyways. The next goal is critical, Gordy. You're on Shlomi trying to make something happen there and a clear by Teeter. Chris Parker back in the game for D'Angelo. Coach Haston keeping fresh troops in there. Systematically moving one or two at a time to give everybody a chance to get their strength, energy, some liquids. Brian Patterson trying to find Snyder. Snyder, nice takeaway. Sultana, quick cross. Good anticipation by Shalomi. Ball just a little too far out of his reach. Sultan in midfield. He's got time. Uncorks one. Wow, what a difference a half makes. Well, that wasn't a great shot by Sultana that time. It's the 15th shot East Brunswick has taken overall in this half, eight of which have been on goal. But again, 15 shots overall in the second half compared to only four in the first half. Bears getting a lot of time and space in midfield now. 
Space they didn't have in the first half. Parker trying to turn, run out of bounds by Jay Madero. First time we've called his name today. What you notice in the middle third of the field, Bear midfielders are getting five, 10 yards of space to set up now. They weren't getting that in the first half. I think it's made a big difference. And it really was uh, Siler who's helped exploit that, especially on the left flank. Once he, Pilots are slow me. Yeah, he kind of got the team in that rhythm, and they were able to score goals off it later on, although he was not directly involved in the goals. Now that's one way to draw the defense out, start taking some of the longer shots. Not on goal, but it gives the brick defense something to think about. Well, what's going to happen now with, with Siler and Pino and Salome starting to emerge? It's going to take the pressure off a, a kid like Ari Schneider, and he may get more opportunities now. Boy, Siler is not afraid. Another good rip. Right off the football crossbar. He would just lean over a little more. He'd be able to keep that shot down, but what a strong shot he has. Sultana flicked on by Salome. Mustangs look a little discouraged at this point. Well, they're not as deep as East Brunswick, so they've had guys on the field a lot longer. And oh. the Ben Br not break philosophy has kind of worn out here a little bit in the second half. Yeah, they do have 10 seniors on the team, so they've got to have some experience out here. I would have thought that after their goal, after playing defensive and scoring that first goal, they would have come out a lot stronger afterwards, but it seems like they've gone 180 degrees the other way. Got about six and a half minutes left in this match. If it remains the same way, if not, we will go into sudden death overtime, two 10 minute periods. Siler, nice touch, nobody down there though. Misplayed by Madero, the Bears throw. Nice play over to Hawk and Josh switching fields. Find the open man, drags it back to the left. He wants to take one. Head down that time. You know, Brick, I think, is experiencing some of the pr same problems that East Brunswick went through in the first half, and that the midfield is not able to link up with the strikers up front. We got Kelly Fletcher for Brick, who's playing way, way up high. On, Brett, but he's with, walked by two guys. With two men marking him, yeah, exactly, and there's no link. Players are not able to get the ball, and as soon as their midfielders touch it, he's not checking to them enough. And when he's not doing that, he's running forward looking for a foot race, and it's not going to happen. Well, what you try to do is if you're playing with one forward or two forwards, you want them to play close to the sweeper, which in effect is going to take away the outside back in a sweeper. But that's only effective if you have people making the runs down the side of the field off the ball. And that time he came back far enough to receive the ball, and Brick is able to control. Brick trying to mount an attack here is Romeo back to Maroney. Take down by Brick. No call. Now he makes a call. There's a Dario coming in a little late on. Kenny Seiler. A little frustration at this point. And actually, uh, Danny Miller got bumped twice, and the referee actually made the second call, and Desiderio Dario got a little too rough. Shannon gobbling up the space in the middle. Also something we didn't see in the first half. Oh, nice feed. Try to hit Shalomi in the middle. Siler, nice step over. 
Nice feed through the middle. Nobody breaking in there, though. Now that might have been a time for a cross over the top. As Eric Feichbaum was parked on the far right side. Cottrell down the side to Moroni. Headed out by Hawk and Josh. Malkmus with Shannon Hart on pursuit there. And we're going to have a corner kick. Brick's best opportunity of the half. Imperative that bears Mark tightly out here. Nice corner. Papadopoulos came off his line and then hesitated there. Yeah, dangerous Could've in swinger that time. Very dangerous. We'll probably see the same thing here, although this one will probably swing out. You come off your line like that, you best get the ball. Or it's going to be back in the net. Cottrell coming up from a sweeper position. Plays a short one. And Romeo would love to have that back. Yeah, you're not looking for a chip shot from there, and that's basically what he did. He leaned back and didn't follow through. He's got to put the laces on that ball and drive it. Baj Gill into the match for Shalomi. This is Baj's first action of the second half. Here the fans exhorting them to play hard, but you don't want to overcommit. That could be every bit as dangerous. Nice through pass over to Feichbaum. Let's it run by him a little too far wide. A little miscommunication between Romeo and Madero. Parker. Baj. And he's left with a beautiful low shot. Force Scudalero to dive to his left. And a clock is, scoreboard clock is officially stopped with two minutes. Well, they're allowing some extra injury time. I'm showing 41 and a half minutes gone by, so this game is, won't be much longer. Always been amazed at the discretion on time the referees have. Hawk and Josh. Looked like he was going to take it in and fire himself. Had a strong, quiet game by Eric Feitbaum as well. He's been involved in the play, created some chances for the Bears. Yeah, he's been another guy who's played wide. You see the end of the game there. He's another guy who helped them wide. Oh, that'll that, be uh, the end of the match. Open things up for the goal. Boy, it's, a tale it's, it's just a tale of two halves for East Brunswick complete. We look at some of the numbers. Shots on goal in the first half. Brick won, and they scored on it. East Brunswick had only two shots on goal in the first half. In the second half, Brick had no shots on goal, and East Brunswick had ten. And they got two in the middle of the second half. And they were back-to-back, -back, as we mentioned. What a dangerous period that is after one goal is scored on a terrific play from Brett Hockenjoss on a feed from Danny Miller. Miller, the sweeper, freshman. Came all the way up, beat two guys off the dribble, and found a wide-open Hawk and Joss who converted. Then about a minute and a half later, it was Chris Parker converting from Hawk and Joss. So Hawk and Joss, a goal and an assist in the second half. East Brunswick stops the two-game slide and improves to 2-2-1 two, two and one on the season while Brick slides down to 2-2-1. Two, two and one. Well, Coach Hasten has to feel great about this. Uh, even though it was only a 2-1 to one game, he saw a lot of life out of his offense. And that should carry over to their next match as well. And again, it continues that trend of East Brunswick trailing at the half, winning the game. So it's not something that I think Coach Aston would like to see. However, a win is a win is a win. <laughs> it's the trend right now, and he's back at 500. That'll wrap it up here from Jay Doyle Field in East Brunswick. Look forward to seeing you next time on Bear Soccer. <laughs>